I'm Jordan, and you're watching Fixbook. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your tie rod ends in this Chrysler Pacifica. This one's a 2007. Okay guys, and here's the tools you'll use for today's project. You can use a breaker bar, you don't have to have an impact, but a 19 millimeter socket, a pair of vice grips, a pair of dikes for side cutters. I used a 12 inch pair of Chrysler wrench, a 18 millimeter socket. In the video, I think I call the one nut, it's a 19, it's actually an 18, and then the new nut that comes with it's a 19, so just keep that in mind. 3 8 ratchet, a uh, big hammer, a uh, 19 millimeter combination wrench, and then a 19 millimeter socket, and just a regular 3 8 ratchet will work. So with all that said, we'll go ahead and begin today's project. Oh, one more thing too. Also, uh, jack and jack stand. So with all that said, we'll go ahead and begin today's project. Okay guys, so the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and lift up the car, remove the lug nuts. We got 19 millimeter lug nuts. You can go ahead and take your wheel off, set them off to the side, and a good place to lift up the car is gonna be right under here, and we can see I've got them lifted up here in the middle, a, a firm piece here. You can see you've got a middle piece here, uh, a firm body piece right there, and they kind of meet together and meet in the middle. So you can lift up both wheels. I had that wheel off the ground, and you can see I've got that wheel off the ground. Then you can put your jack stand right up under this piece right here so we can ensure we're doing a safe job so once you've got your car lifted up your wheel removed i'll show you what's next okay guys the next thing i'm going to do is this is the old tie rod in this is the old tie rod in off the other side this is the new one and before i get started i'm just going to go ahead and get my new tie rod in ready you got it comes with a little valve here and that's a grease valve and you're just going to kind of screw this guy in and then you're going to take an eight millimeter combination wrench and you're just going to tighten this guy on and not too tight you see right now i'm tightening at the end once it kind of meets the surface area there i'm just coming in with my finger right in here you do not want to over tighten it it strips really easy because this is a small aluminum part so just snug it down right about there that's good and if you have a grease gun it's not a bad idea to go ahead and grease it but when you look down in the hole you can see it is pre-greased if yours is as mine was and now this tie right in is ready to go now i'll show you the first step in removing this guy Okay guys, and the first thing we're going to do is we've got to break loose this nut here and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spray it down with some PB Blaster. I'm going to spray it from that side. And what that's going to do is it's going to help us because this guy's on there pretty tight. So we're going to break this guy loose by spinning him right because the tie rod's coming left. This nut, we have to spin him right to send that nut that way and then we'll spin our tie rod in left to pull him off this way. So it gets funny sometimes when you're working on these guys. Sometimes it can even be reverse thread and that sort of thing. So Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is get you a pair of vice grips on there, get it on there good and tight, set up just like this. I've already broke mine loose, but I'm gonna show you how to break it loose. Get it set up like this, and then we're gonna come underneath the car, and this is why you really want a jack stand, just to make sure you're safe. And you can see my foot here, you're just gonna kick. And by doing so, you'll be able to break this nut loose. So here in just a moment, I'll show you the next step. All right guys, the next thing we gotta do is remove this nut, so I'm just gonna spray it with some PB Blaster. Makes the job easier. And then I'm gonna get on here with my big ratchet, and it's a 19 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and pull, and go ahead and kind of break them loose. And then I'm just gonna take my automatic ratchet here and I'm gonna zap them the rest of the way off. And there we go. I'll show you what's next here in just a moment. Next thing we'll do guys, is we've gotta break the connection here. And I'm just gonna preserve the stud. I'm replacing the tie right in, but maybe you're just taking it off to do something else. Uh, putting the nut on will preserve that stud. So now we're just gonna beat it like that. And then we can just take this guy off and there we go, we've got him loose. Okay guys, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna twist this guy off. Now, when you get to yours, it may not be this easy because when I was working on the other side, it was not this easy. So, what I ended up doing is, if it's the factory one, it should be a 19 millimeter right here. If not, you may need you a big old crescent wrench like this. But what you basically do 
is you know you're spinning this guy left so what I did was I think I held this side with my hand and put no 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 I put my foot on the vice grip and then with my hand I pushed down except I was on the other side and I was pulling up so um, I used a foot on one and lifted with the other one and then I was finally able to break this loose and it was nuts the whole way I had to use the crescent wrench the whole way um, taking this guy off but this guy seems to be coming off nice so um, yeah we're just gonna take this guy off and then uh, I'll show you putting it back together here in just a moment okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dab a little anesthesia on there just to prevent the issue if I ever have to change these again um, because like I said the the one on the other side was really hard coming off so anesthesia is good it's gonna ensure that this guy always comes on and off pretty easily so now we're just gonna hold this and we're gonna screw this guy on just like you're screwing a bolt on and also another thing guys I checked this is the exact same length um, sometimes you don't have the exact same length tie rod ends um, this part just happens to be the exact same length which is good because that means it's not gonna throw your alignment off too much although I still highly recommend an alignment after doing this job so that's kinda where the nut was sitting the way an alignment is done when you're aligning the toe is they move this nut back and forth and that repositions the knuckle and it aligns your car so we're keeping this nut in pretty much the same place so my customers toe isn't going to be too off but I'm still telling him to get an alignment and he's still getting an alignment done so we're just going to screw this guy all the way in until he goes to the nut and then we're going to tighten this nut back on there and then we're just going to be just about done so I'll show you that here in just a moment okay guys so now I'm just gonna hold my tie rod in and you're gonna want it positioned like this so it can go back up into the knuckle and now we're just gonna tighten this guy on there good and tight and I got him that way and I'm gonna come across and uh, that's on there pretty tight I'm gonna come down just to make sure I'm tight enough oh and I think I'm going the wrong way I gotta go lefty tighty it's weird And when, when I put this guy back onto the knuckle, I'll tighten him again just to make sure he's getting tight. And then we're going to have to arrange this guy so that we can slip him up into the knuckle. So we're going to remove that guy and just stick him on up in there. So now I push this guy up through here. Then we're just going to take the castle nut that I keep dropping. And we're going to go ahead and get him on here and get him in there good and tight. It's a 19 millimeter again. And then we'll just go ahead and tighten this up and then we'll stick our cotter key through there okay guys so now we got this guy tightened on there and just make sure you got him good and snug it's kind of snug there and that's how the cotter key is going to fit through there so I'm just going to reach over here and And we're just gonna pull them through here and once we get them all the way through we're gonna bend them in such a way to where if the nut ever tried to come off it wouldn't come off so I've got them just about all the way through there and then we're gonna bend them back like that and bend this guy the other way and then this guy won't ever be able to come off because the powder key is protecting them there and that's because it's a steering and it's a safety issue there so so now um installation is pretty simple you're just gonna put your wheel back on and you're pretty good to go so that's pretty much gonna conclude today's little project thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time thanks for watching guys um and if you would just like it subscribe and leave comments and stuff like that that'd be great thanks guys see y'all next time